Welcome to the Forbidden Zone. You probably all know what it is. I mean, not this in particular, but in general. This is a mechanical combination safe lock. It has a dial that's usually mounted on the outside of a door and the lock usually mounted on the inside of the door. And this weird looking wooden block serves as the door. Uh, when you have dialed in the right code, you can unlock the lock, uh, the bolt retracts and you can open up the lock and you can also, of course, uh, lock it back up. You probably also know that you can change the code um, of these uh, safe locks, but you are not free to choose any number. There is a number range for the last number that is forbidden. That's the forbidden zone. And the manually clear states that for this lock the forbidden zone is between 0 and 10 for the last number. And why that is and what happens if you um, choose the last number in the forbidden zone, that's what this video is all about. After the lid is removed we can look inside and try to understand how this works. We have the combination dial that turns its spindle and the spindle is connected to the drive cam by a splying key. There are four different options to connect them together. They are labeled and why this is important and why we have four different options I will explain just in a minute. But now when I turn the dial you can see I directly turn the drive wheel or the drive cam and the drive cam then turns the code wheel and the code wheel then turns the next code wheel and the next code wheel turns the code wheel on the very bottom. The very bottom code wheel is the first number that you dial in and then the middle code wheel gets connected to the second number and the last number is connected to the code wheel uh, on the very top. Now when all code wheels are aligned properly you can see that the notches that they have are perfectly at the position of the fence of this arm here. And when you continue turning the dial, you can see the arm can fall in these notches. And you can also see that this cutout here on the drive cam catches um, a tooth or a nose uh, on this arm and when you continue turning you can see how the bolt gets retracted and the lock opens. Let me show you this again. So here it's locked up. Then you turn, the fence falls in the notches of the code wheels. This part here catches um, this peak here on the arm and then you can continue turning and the arm pulls in the bolt and the lock opens. So now I think it's time to talk about these four different options and why they are important. In order to understand why there are four connection points between the drive cam and the spindle, I've unscrewed the dial. Yeah, the lock would be mounted like this uh, that is the lock on the inside of the of the door and here we have the bracket or the plate that accepts the combination dial and once you have mounted this to the door uh, you can screw in the, the dial the spindle just like so you can see how it comes out and for this operation you have to fulfill two properties first when you screw it in it should not be too tight and not be too loose. But on the other hand, you should choose the right connection point between the spindle and the drive cam. And this has to do with the mounting options. A door uh, can require the lock um, uh, to be locked up on the right side, on the top, on the left or on the bottom. And uh, the index to choose or to dial in the code is most of the time or looking upwards. So when the index here is pointing upwards you have 
For example here, the orientation of the bolt looking horizontally to the left. And of course you could have any other position here. And that's what these uh, letters on the drive cam say. They say that you have to choose um, a certain position to connect the spindle to it depending on the orientation of this bolt when the index here is pointing upwards. So let's zoom in. We can see here for example, uh, I think this is RH, it's hard to see through the viewfinder. So this is right horizontal, This the next is vertical up, then we have uh, left horizontal and the last one is vertical down. So in our case the index here is pointing upwards. We have to choose a horizontal left or left horizontal because the bolt is looking well to the left. The lock would just work fine if you choose any other connection points. However, this um, affects the orientation, the angle between the index here or the, the dial and, and the, the, the place where you choose or where you dial in the code, so this index here, and the geometry of the drive cam. And if you change the angle between this geometry of the drive cam and the index here, you change the range where the forbidden zone lies. So the manual says that the forbidden zone is between 0 and 10. And this is only true if you choose the right connection point between the spindle and the drive cam. As I said, the lock would just work fine if you choose any other connection points. However, the forbidden zone would be different. And this is not good because you would look in the manual look at the forbidden zone and choose your combination, your code accordingly. So um, it's very good if you choose the right connection points. So only then it's true what the manual says that the forbidden zone is between 0 and 10. Now let me reassemble the lock and I will show you how it looks like when you choose a code that lays in the forbidden zone. So everything is reassembled and I aligned the three code wheels so that we can change the code. You can see that the position where the wheels have to be for changing the code is a little bit off compared to the opening position. So the, the cutout here, the notch, are aligned but they are not aligned so that the fence would be able to fall in but have a little bit of an angle to it and that's the same angle that sorry, that the change index has to the opening index. So with this offset we can insert the change key into this hole here and turn it. When you turn it you force this piece here to come out a little bit and this disengages the outer wheel from the inner wheel so you can then dial in a new coat and the outer wheels would stay in place. Of course you would do this only when the lid is on. So let's put the lid on top. Insert the change key. Turn it. And now we can dial in a new coat. The new coat is 10, 35 with 5 in the forbidden zone, which is between 0 and 10. Alright, let's change the code. We dial, we turn the combination dial a couple of times to the left until we stop at 10. Always remember to use the change index. So we have reached 10. Next number is 30. You want to see 30 three times in total. So that's 30 the first time, 30 the second time, 30 the third time, 
and now turn back to 5 and stop at the second time we see 5 so now the new code is installed we can remove the change key and we are ready to go so, so let's dial in the new code and see what it does it was 10 30 30 30 back to 5 and stop at the second time let's look inside inspect the situation we can see that the cutouts um, the notches are aligned perfectly and the fence has already uh, dropped in and also it has uh, engaged so that uh, the drive cam has engaged with the nose here of this arm and when I continue turning the dial this time to the right the lock opens pretty cool so no big deal with the forbidden zone you might think but now let's try to lock it back up also works but now it stops here basically Actually, we are in a locked up situation. We cannot turn the dial any more outside this range here. That's pretty bad. I mean, it's not a terrible bad because you can still unlock the door, open up um, the door and uh, fix it. But this is, of course, not uh, a desired situation. Um, and that's because the drive cam and the front wheel are connected and they turn along at the same time. So when you try to come out of the situation and turn to the left, um, you would want to um, move this arm outwards because the drive cam wants this. But at the same time, the front wheel uh, locks it up in place, keeps it in place because it, it moves to the, to the right and uh, keeps it tight. So this situation is, of course, uh, not very good and you should try to avoid it. This is one um, uh, result of uh, choosing a number uh, within the forbidden zone but I've seen uh, different um, other problems with other numbers between 0 and 10 for example that you cannot open uh, the lock anymore and this is of course the worst thing that you could have. So, better choose the right connection points according to the mounting orientation of the bolt and you are golden. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty fun. I mean, it's not rocket science, uh, but it's interesting to fiddle around with these um, mechanical uh, combination locks and thankfully I have one to play around with and yeah, that was Willy E who sent this lock to me. So, Willy E, Victor, thank you very much for giving this lock to me. It was very interesting to explore it. Yeah, and everybody else, thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and bye bye. Quick addendum for a spectacular close of this video. I've played around with the numbers and I found a code that is really bad for this lock. Now, this lock is really messed up and I've already dialed in the bad code. You can see that the cutouts on the wheels are perfectly aligned so the arm can drop in. Let's continue turning and see what happens. I continue turning, you can see the arm starts dropping in but also the front wheel starts turning. Let me repeat. You can see the front wheel starts turning and now we are in a bad situation because the front wheel pulls on the arm and also this engagement here wants to pull the arm but in a different direction so both are fighting against each other and this causes the lock to bind and to yeah not work not work correctly anymore so it does not function anymore and you are in a bad situation because whatever you do you are not able to open the lock anymore of course you are advised to test your new combination before you close the door and have no chance of fixing it but this is just to show you how bad it could be if you choose a number in the forbidden zone it could mean that you will not be able
to open your lock anymore, although all the wheels are perfectly aligned. <laughs> Pretty interesting stuff and uh, yeah, hope again you found it interesting and enjoyable. Happy picking and until we meet again, cheers and bye bye!